I I hesitate to say this is the worst tag team match that I've ever seen, but it's the worst tag team match I've ever seen involving people, so at least some people that I thought would be better than this. Santana and Ortiz against Kenny Olivier and Matt Hardy. Santana and Ortiz are in the ring first. Olivier comes out. They attack him on the stage. So at least we didn't get to see the gesticulating and the finger pointing and the constipation faces. But they're beating the shit out of him. They throw him in the ring and they're beating the shit out of him. Matt Hardy's right in the tube. He waits for his music to play in his music. They're beating the shit out of him. His music starts playing. He's 30 feet away. He walks out then and, it, and he... Isn't your partner supposed to save you when the heels jump you and are kicking the shit out of you two on one without waiting for his fucking music to play and him walking out on the stage like he's going to the bus stop? If, if, if with friends like that, I don't need enemas. So then Santana goes out and gets a fight with Matt Hardy on the stage, but then Matt comes to the ring and they get in a big four way. Well, Matt also had control of the pyro again. I, I, that went past me, actually. I, you know, I saw the pyro blow up, but I figured they just, they paid the pyro guy and they fucking changed the entrance to, you know, in the, in the finish meeting, they decided to jumpstart and they forgot about they paid for the pyro. I don't fucking know. No, you see Damascus, who apparently is 3,000 years old, controls the pyro with his mind. All right, well, there you go. Um... I, 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 Olivier is just rotten. He goes from selling to being a hundred percent and frisky in seconds. He makes his own comeback and then tags out, which he did a couple times. And this we'll talk about the most egregious one in a minute, but they get some heat on Olivier in terms of the heels as a team, get him down and, and start kicking the shit out of him. The referee I've made note looks like a reanimated corpse. Um, <laughs> this, what was happening was just happening. Olivier is horrible at selling and fighting from underneath. He has rotten body language. I don't believe his fire. He lands too many strikes before he gets cut off. Um, he did the snapdragon double down and then made the most boring slow motion cold tag in history to Matt, who by that point didn't need to make a comeback. <clears throat> Here's the thing. If if you're getting heat on a fucking baby face, right? Especially in a tag team match, you're wanting to him to stay alive is what we call it. Stay alive, don't die. Sell, but don't die. Stay alive, try to get away in a working fashion. Try to get out from under the punishment. You know, show the pain, be animated, but still leave yourself open for all the shit we're doing to you. And occasionally fire back and or the heel will call a hope spot for the, like, you kick shit out of the guy, shoot him off, you go for a backdrop, he sunset flips, that's a hope spot, right? But you kick out and continue on. It was hope, the people had hope, but no, he shut him down again. <clears throat> One of the things you do as, as far as fighting underneath is if you've been selling, you're on your knees, the guy's walking towards you, you throw a shot to the midsection, boom, and the guy sells it, backs him up a little bit. You maybe throw another one. Fucking backs him up a little bit. As you come up, maybe you throw one to the face or maybe you're trying to throw one to the face. The heel fucking cuts you off with a knee in the fucking stomach. Now he shoots you off for a goddamn backdrop and goes for it, but you sunset flip him, but he continues rolling or he kicks out immediately because he's fresher than you are, but you try immediately turn and start trying to fight for the corner and he grabs your leg and pulls you back to his side of the ring. If you're fighting out of the corner, you hit a couple of shots, bing, bing, but he goes for the eyes and you stagger to another place in the ring, but you're, you're trying to fight back. You're trying to get away. But if you land too many strikes, a lot of the best baby faces that would fight back from underneath would just throw a couple of shots to create some space and then duck and dodge and try to dive for the tag and they'd have the foot caught and pulled back or they'd try to get away somehow but the more you hit the heel, you get to a point where you're making your own comeback. And especially it drives me insane when after a good set of heat, a baby face will fire up, boom, 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 and not only land the punches or whatever, but shoot a heel off and give him a bump. 
and then go to do something else, and then the fucking heel moves or whatever, and the guy gets cut off again. Well, now, besides the fact that you've made your own comeback, you've also, you had an opening to make the tag logically to the people watching you fighting for that corner. If you had the energy to bump that heel and then go for another move, then you fucked up and you're an idiot. You should have at least bumped the heel and dove for the corner. Now, instead of the heat being on the heels for them preventing the baby face from getting to the corner in the people's minds that are watching, even subconsciously, they're going to go, well, he shouldn't have fucking done that. And they're starting to be, well, this guy's an idiot. And then if you lose them like that, besides that, the hot tag to your fresh baby face should be the big pop. And then that guy should be able to run through and get retribution as the fresh man. If you've made your own comeback and been obviously fresh and hit too many things and then tag, it's a cold tag, and you've handed that guy a fucking handful of shit. And it, it, Jerry Lawler in Memphis used to do that. And to be honest, he really needed to because as the undisputed top guy, top baby face, in some cases, in tag matches or six-mans or whatever, it didn't make sense for Jimmy Valiant, if, if, if he was his partner, to sell. Because that wasn't Jimmy's thing. It may not even make sense for Austin Idol to sell. Lawler could sell so brilliantly, and he could get the people in the right place so they'd get the heat on him. But because of a big part of a Lawler match in Memphis was seeing him drop the strap, unless he made dry, unless he was making a comeback, he couldn't drop the strap. Because you couldn't prostitute the strap. Once the strap came down, if he was a babyface, he had to make a fucking comeback. And the people wanted to see the strap. They got they got mad if they didn't. So the fucking heels never liked it that much, but the babyface partners of his hated it because he would start his own comeback. They the heels would get the heat on him, and then finally they'd fuck up and he'd get a chance to come up and start bowing up. Boom, boom, boom. He'd drop the strap. He'd land one, two, three punches. The heels would bump. Then they'd he'd pick them up, and he'd back them to his corner, and he'd tag idle or valiant or whoever. And together, they would shoot the heel off and do a double something, and then idle would continue the comeback by going over and nailing the partners and doing more shit. But unless that's a, that was a specific position that somebody was over in, under normal circumstances, if you start making your own fucking comeback and then you give the hot tag to your partner, fuck you, you suck. And you just handed this guy a, a, an iceberg. So that's what Olivier did. He just stood there flat-footed, punched the guy three or four times. They did some duck bullshit, whatever the fuck. Uh, then I think it was Ortiz. He did his comedy like he was going to scratch the back, snap dragon, double down, and then he just crawled right over, and there was no way anybody could have stopped him. It was a foregone conclusion he was going to make the tag, and then he makes the tag. Horrible. Uh, Matt Hardy made a nice comeback and then milked the delete thing for so long while he was waiting for Santana to stand up, and I swear to God, Santana wasn't ever going to stand up. And JR said at some point at that, because <laughs> they were saying, well, you better hurry up and delete him. JR said, well, I guess they're not listening to my emails. So I guess he said something about this, uh, the length of milking going on. Um, then suddenly Santana and Ortiz almost killed Matt Hardy with a backdrop over the top rope and a fucking dive where they got kind of halfway off on everything. But then did you notice this spot, Brian? <clears throat> um, now it's Matt and Ortiz that are going to be in the ring and Santana and Olivier need to be outside the ring or need to be away from whatever Matt and Ortiz are going to do. So th this actually happened at a, one period in this match, Matt Hardy knocks Santana down to the floor outside the ring. On the other side of the ring steps, six feet away is standing Kenny Olivier. But Kenny Olivier climbs up the stairs, gets in the ring, in the middle of where Matt and Ortiz are trying to do their business, walks over to the other ropes and dove over the top rope onto Santana. 
the guy that was right next to him before he left the floor to get back in the ring to begin with and then threw Santana back into the ring. If he wanted to throw Santana into the ring, all he would have had to have done was walk six feet to his fucking left and just grab the fucking guy and thrown him back into the ring. And then Matt Hardy hits a twist of fate on fucking somebody. I think it may have been Santana and got a two count. And boy, he stuck him upside down and got a two count. And then, of course, they continued on. And after the twist of fate on Santana, he and Ortiz immediately took over on Kenny Olivier and did 18 things to him. And then suddenly everything came to a standstill while everybody was down or confused. Then Olivier slipped out of Santana and Ortiz's fin double team finish. They were going to give him off the top and actually gave Matt Hardy another cold tag. I've never seen two cold tags from the same guy to the same guy in the same match ever. Then Matt Hardy got a submission hold on Ortiz. But at that point, if if we were going to take any of this fucking seriously, which was hard enough, here comes Sammy Guevara in a neck brace, with, I think with a crutch, he was limping, he was carrying a chair that he could barely carry because his fucking arm was bad. He was acting like a manager after a fucking match with a goddamn baby face, but he's a wrestler. He comes to the ring and Matt Hardy just fucking drops him. And this is all happening right in front of the referee. Now he, well, he came in the ring and then Matt fucking drops him. And then they beat Ortiz. So Sammy Guevara comes out to get even more heat taken off of him, all beat up. Supposedly they do shit in front of the referee. Then they beat Ortiz after reminding everybody, don't take the heels at all seriously. I would have expected to see this tag team match on any outlaw show in any small building in America, but not with Matt Hardy in it. I've, I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Well, that makes two of you. <laughs> I mean, did I miss anything? I, I don't know what there is to add to that. Um, well, proud and powerful. Which one is the one, the tall one? Which one's proud and which one's powerful? Uh, Santana is the taller one. Ortiz looks like Pampiro Furpo. Yeah, Ortiz looks like Pampiro Furpo. And he's taking comedy bumps that take me out of the whole goddamn deal. And he makes silly faces. I Because he makes a silly face after he lands on concrete and makes a silly face. I think Santana has a lot of potential. I liked him when he had a couple singles matches. I think he has something. Ortiz is not very good in the ring. You summed up the Omega thoughts. Here's one you're not going to agree with me on. I really wish AEW hadn't signed Matt Hardy. Because well, I, it, no, I have yeah, not liked no, no. anything he has brought to the table so far in AEW. Well, I, w I wish they'd have signed Matt Hardy instead of fucking Damascus or whatever the fuck this is. Whatever this is, which is basically uh, Matt Hardy Unchained. I'll... I'll probably add to my thoughts when we talk about the Jericho interview segment. But the other thing is this, you know, you went over all of the problems with the match and the match layout. Proud and powerful are a regular tag team there. Yes. And they now lost to this makeshift tag team because Kenny Omega and hangman page are the tag team champions. And these guys can't even beat Kenny Omega and someone who isn't his regular partner. I thought that was a mistake as well, but what do I know? My dad's not a billionaire. I anyway, I and I, I I hate to be uncomplimentary of Matt Hardy, but I don't what the fuck is going on here with this stuff. I didn't see the impact stuff. I didn't watch that specifically because I wanted to like Matt Hardy. 